Takže zdravíme na klubovní YouTube a dneska jsme tu na Rockford People's KC. Hi, hi Tom. Hello. It's so lovely to have you here. Thank you for sitting down with us and it's great to have you back, I've got to say. Thank you very much. Now, it's been about five years since you last played in Czech Republic. Yeah, yeah. And I saw that you did some sightseeing today in Prague. We so. did, yeah. Um, we went to St. Nicholas Church, um, probably my favorite church in Europe. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, I'm also a fiend for a coffee, and I have a favorite coffee shop in town, so we went there as well. But oh. Then just did some walking around. Which coffee shop is it? Uh, Cafe Ebel. Oh, okay. I might write that down. It's near uh, the old, like the clock tower. It's, it's near oh, there. right. That's good. Good tip. <laughs> Now, you've played quite a number of shows since Casey came back, but I've got to go back to the very first one, the comeback okay. show. So what was it like to stand back on that stage after 1,338 days, I think you said it was? <laughs> um, it was nerve wracking for, for sure. Um, even like as far as, because obviously, I mean, prior to us announcing the shows and everything, we were very apprehensive about how it would be received and whether people would still be invested whether they would still care and then um moving towards the shows themselves even though they'd sold out we were still like oh you know what if it's not the same and like what if it, they, if we get up there and we like we actually don't like it anymore and you know it's just a kind of not a fantasy as such but like it's um like a, a memory rather than like an emotion sort of thing um and yeah it was great like we, we couldn't have asked for a better kind of initial show back in bristol um And it felt really good and like organic to be back with each other and to play the shows. And then obviously like the, the other shows that we did at the time as well, they were all really fun. Um, crowds were all very receptive. And so, yeah, it, it was um, very uh, like validating, I guess, to, to have that feeling again and come back and almost feel not, not as if like nothing had changed, because obviously we, de we definitely like matured as people and things, but the, um, the kind of the passion, the emotion for it was still there, I think. Oh, that's great. Now, what did you miss the most about the band life while Casey was um, gone? I think travel, to be honest, like which is a bit of a cop out answer, I suppose. I do enjoy like meeting and speaking to people as well. So I, you know, I've, I've been trying to do as much of that as possible since we've been back playing shows. But um, as with today, just kind of getting to come to places that I wouldn't normally get to come to and revisit favorite like attractions or favorite restaurants and cafes and things like that, and just kind of sightsee and just be a bit of a tourist. But I've always really enjoyed that, and so yeah, I think. That's something that we've definitely tried to do a lot more of, and particularly do it as a band as well. So like today, for example, we all kind of explored Prague together, whereas before we might kind of go off and have like a few of the guys might find a bar and then some of us will go to a cafe and then like I'll go to a church or something like that. Whereas now we'll try and stick together as a unit and kind of do things together. And yeah, that's probably my favorite thing. Oh, that's great. And you've been quite busy, you did a lot of touring, and you also released your third album, mm -hmm. How to Disappear. So when did you guys start working on that one? Um, it wasn't too long after we released Great Grief and a Tone, to be honest. I mean, I think we, we might have even been kicking ideas back and forth while we were releasing those singles even, because we kind of already felt by that point that like, regardless of how the reception went to the reunion, We wanted to continue making music anyway, so we were like, we might as well start writing. And so I think a few demos have kind of been passed back and forth. When would that have been? November, December, two years ago. Um, and then, yeah, we kind of, once those January shows are out of the way, that's when we really started concentrating on it and actually kind of focusing our energy and thinking, right, we, we really need to get like a third record finished and down. Um, but yeah, it, it was kind of like just an organic progression from those two singles we wrote and recorded. We kind of just like fell naturally towards writing a record. And then it was just when the time came, we sort of knuckled down a bit and kind of put a bit more effort into it. Okay. And writing a comeback al album surely isn't easy. So did you feel like bigger weight of maybe expectations or pressure? Or was it the opposite when you were like, okay, this is maybe a chance to start like a new or... Um, More, I think the second, to be honest, like I think we definitely had that conversation around like, do we want to continue, like pick up exactly where we left off and write a record that we may have, like if we hadn't had the hiatus, write the record that we would have written in 2019, 2020 and kind of pick up from that point? Or do we want to just write from where we are now? And then if anyone is and happy with it we kind of just explain look you know there's been a four year gap which has kind of caused us to naturally move on from where we were and this is where we think we would have ended up at this point anyway um and ultimately it came down to just us wanting to write a record that we were happy with um i think that we 
we went back and forth on that conversation for a while and we kind of arrived at a place where we were like we're never going to please everybody and the most important thing is that we produce a product that we are happy with and that we are comfortable with um and you know if fans like it that's great and if they don't that's fine like we understand you know progression happens and not everyone is going to follow with you but um yeah, it, it was more kind of our own expectations than anything. It wasn't necessarily like, oh my God, like what are the fans going to think of it? It was just like, we wanted to make a record for us. And so we've always been our big, own biggest critics anyway, I think. And so um, that's always been the, the kind of the primary driver of like when we're writing music. It's like, are we happy with it? Are we comfortable putting this out under our own names? And like, am I going to look back on this record in five years time and think, oh yeah, that was a good record. Like, I'm, I'm happy that I was a part of that. And that was kind of like, that was the mark for us. Okay, and I want to talk a little bit about the lyrical aspects of the album because I think it's one of the things that really makes your band stand out, you know. But uh, just to start with, for those who may not be familiar with it, can you like sum up the main message and themes of the album? Um, I've tried to like distill this down a few times. I always have trouble with it. Um, it's sort of... a discusses the temporal aspects of life i suppose and like things like legacy and um discussions around kind of what happens after you've passed away and sort of how do the people that you know feel about it and how are they impacted um, and then sort of how those ideas and feelings relate to other people that i've known in my life and sort of how their passing or how their departure has impacted me as a person and then kind of how i think that my departure would then impact somebody else and so on and so forth a um, little bit of like religion mixed in there, I suppose. But right, well, just from you described, you've always taken on very complex themes mm -hmm. in your songs, and I actually love to see when bands don't go this black and white approach when it comes to like portraying emotions, mm -hmm. but have this nuance to it. So, do you think that maybe helps your fans to relate more to the, to the music or? Um, potentially, it's definitely a case that like, I mean, very few things in life are binary, right? Like very few things are, like you said, black and white. And I think that um, having a level of like human empathy and a level of kind of emotional intelligence to discuss a topic and think that um, actually maybe I'm wrong and that, like, you know, maybe there is more to something than I think or something that like, I believe, particularly religion. So one of the topics on the record is that I've never had a particularly good or close relationship with religion but I understand that for a lot of people it is a positive driving force and it is something that kind of aids them in various ways and it's kind of talking about my life as if to say you know what if I am wrong and what if there is something else and then discussing like well if there is something more then why has my life progressed the way that it has and sort of trying to think about that even though it's not something I particularly believe in myself but um, whether or not that means that it's more relatable I'm I can't say for certain because I'm not um, I tend to write just obviously from my own perspective and um, I, I think it would be difficult for me to put myself in somebody else's shoes in that regard, but hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I feel like this honesty in your writing and you know being able to depict both the bad in life but also the hope really has built a huge community around your band and there's a strong like relationship to the music. So when you stand on that stage, what does it feel like to be on the receiving end of that connection? Um, it's always very uh, humbling, I think. Um, again, we, we're always our own worst critics and by extension, we're always like, we always try and meet our own expectations and like whether a show has five people at it, whether it has 500, 5,000, it doesn't matter, providing we go on the stage and we are happy with the performance that we give and that we feel authentically invested in what we're doing, that's the most integral and like the most important thing. But then, when there have been occasions where we do really kind of feel that energy reciprocated from the crowd, it's very like, oh, you know, there, there's a meaning to all this. And like, you know, it is, um, it obviously feels great like to, to have that, but it's not like, it's not something that we rely on. And like, whether we have a good show or not isn't dependent on whether like the crowd is it like super active or like really vocal, because there are going to be people that come to a show and they don't want to enjoy it in that way. They're not going to be there to be the loudest voice in the room or kind of the most active body in the room. They're going to be there to just, kind of sit and soak it in and that's completely fine as well um, and it's something that I, I try and express every now and again on stage to say that you know you can enjoy the show in the way that you best see fit I'm not gonna yell at you and tell you that you need to like be moshing or like screaming and that kind of thing like if that's not your bag then that's completely fine but yeah it, it's always nice to obviously like to have people know the words and sing along and kind of help out when I'm struggling and stuff so. 
<laughs> Great. Now, speaking of touring, you recently did your first US headline tour. Uh-huh, that was last September, yeah. Uh, what was the reception like? What was... I know it's the whole... Yeah, yeah <laughs> it, it was really cool. Like, again, I think that like we went into it um, with very, very low expectations because to us, we were like, it's our very first time playing, other than Chicago, our very first time playing all of these cities. These are brand new markets to us. For all we know, there is no one here that gives a shit. And like, it's our job to, to make them, either make them give a shit or just like give them something to be invested in. Um, but yeah, all the shows were, were really lovely. Like we, we had a really nice time, met a lot of really cool people. And then obviously when we returned in January, we got to see a lot of those people again that had returned to shows to see us and obviously see Holding Absence. And um, yeah, again, very, um, very validating, very gratifying to, to have that experience and obviously be able to, to go out there and play shows in the first place, but to have people show up and give a shit was really nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, that's great. And I can't wait to hear you today. And before we wrap this up, do you have any final message for your Czech fans? Oh, thank you very much for your patience. It's been a long time since we've been here. Um, Obviously, this is one of the select few shows remaining for the, the rest of the year for us now. We're going to have to take a forced hiatus this time. Um, but hopefully next year we'll be back uh, to play some of our own shows here. Well, we can't wait for that. Cool. Thank you very much. Perfect. Thank you very much.